you have a diagram of a water molecule, three atoms, and here is a diagram showing their positions in space with the three coordinates of each of the points where the atoms are sitting. So point A, B and C. And in this first part, we're asked to express A, B and A, C in component form. So let's look at the journey from A to B. In terms of position vectors, B minus A. And remember the position, there's some origin somewhere. The position vector of B is how do you get from the origin to the point B. Components therefore are negative 10, 18, 7. Minus, how do you get to the origin from the origin to the point A, components are negative 2, 2, 5. So the journey from A to B has components negative 10 minus negative 2, that's negative 10 plus 2, which is negative 8 for the x component. 18 minus 2 is 16 for the y component. 7 minus 5 is, is 2 for the z component. And let's do a similar calculation for the journey from A to C. It's little c minus little a, these two position vectors. Components of C from the origin out to C, negative 4, negative 6, 21. And components of A, negative 2, 2, 5. So the x component, negative 4 minus negative 2 is negative 4 plus 2, which is negative 2. Negative 6 minus 2 is negative 8. 21 minus 5 is 16. So there we have the two sets of components. So from A to B and from A to C. Components of A to B, negative 8, 16, 2. Components of A to C negative 2, negative 8, 16. And let's suppose that the angle between them is theta. So let's look at part B. Hence or otherwise find the size of the angle BAC, the size of that angle theta. Now the theory behind this, if you have couple of vectors v and w with an angle theta between them. We know that the dot product v dot w is defined as the length of v times the length of w times the cosine of the angle between theta. So if we want cos theta on its own, we divide by these the product of these two lengths. So we'll end up with v dot w over the length of v times the length of w, magnitude of v times the magnitude of w. So that's the definition. So for part b, we'll use, now let's call this v and let's call this w. We'll use cosine of theta v dot w over the length of v, the length of w. And we've got these marked on the diagram, so anyone reading this knows what V and W are. So the cosine of the angle that we're after will be the dot product of V and W. Now remember, the dot product of two vectors, if we know their components, you multiply the corresponding x's, y's and z's and add the results. So the two x components, negative 2 and negative 8, will be multiplied. Then we add, multiply the y components, negative 8 times 16, and then add, we multiply the z components, 16 times 2. And the result of all that, we will divide by the length of v, and remember the length of a vector, if we know its components, we just square the three components and add the results. So it's negative 8 squared plus 16 squared plus 2 squared. That multiplied by 
the square root of negative 2 squared plus negative 8 squared plus 16 squared. So the top line of this fraction, 16 plus 128, sorry that would be negative, minus 128, plus 32. On the bottom line, now, if you look under these brackets, you'll notice that we've got exactly the same expression. A 2 squared, that's the same as negative 2 squared, negative 8 squared, negative 8 squared, a 16 squared, and a 16 squared. So when you multiply two numbers, the square root of the same number, the square roots just disappear. So really on the bottom, we've got this expression without the square root signs. So we've got negative 8 times negative 8. We've got 16 times 16. And we've got 4. Now you should be really using your calculator to do this. Um, that's 48 minus 128 over 64 plus 256 is 320 plus 4. So that's 324. And on the top line, we'll get a negative 80. And the bottom, 324. So we have to find the angle whose cosine is negative 80 over 324. Now, negative cosines, an angle in the second quadrant has a cosine that's negative, as does one in the third quadrant. But angles between vectors are never greater than 180 degrees. So we would be talking about a second quadrant angle. So cos theta equals negative 80 over 324, and we're in the second quadrant with the result. So the first quad angle... And then once we find the first quad angle, we'll take it away from 180 to get the second quadrant angle. So first quad angle is the angle whose cosine is 80 over 324, just ignoring the negative sign. So the angle whose cosine is 80 divided by 324. So I'm using a cos, you may probably have cos to the minus 1 or second function cosine for that angle whose cosine is 80 over 324. And I'm in degrees. Be aware of whether you're in degrees or radians. So that's 75.7 degrees approximately. So theta, that's the angle we require, would be 180 degrees minus 75.7. So that'll be 104.3 degrees. So that's angle BAC.